Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Hamdan Al Shamsi Lawyers and Legal Consultants Workshop on Space Sector One at the Youth Hub in Emirates Towers. My name is Jasmine Bernard, and I'm the Business Development Manager at Hamdan Al Shamsi Lawyers and Legal Consultants. Today, we are going to be joined by guest speakers Helen Tung from Hamdan Al Shamsi Lawyers, and we are pleased to be joined by the UAE National Space Agency. Today, the guest speakers will be Nasser Al Rashidi, Talal Al Kasai, Fatima Al Shamsi. Dr. Thahia Al Sharji and Hamda Al Hassani. Thank you so much to everybody for joining us today. I will now introduce you to Miss Helen Tung, our first speaker. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, it's a very exciting time, and especially with an eminent panel like you all. Uh, we're very excited because of the recent developments, uh, particularly with the Hope Probe. So I'd like to start with um, uh, Nasia. Uh, maybe you can tell us a bit about why and how important space, the role of policies and regulations are in relation to UAE space sector. Thank you, Helen, and uh, good morning, everyone. And thanks also for Hamdan Shamsi and all those who work in organizing this important workshop. It's very important that we continuously uh, hit the light about the importance of space and how it's actually contributing to the overall economy and vision of the UAE. Now, talking about economy and vision, policy is in the heart of that. Um, I think it's very important to realize the history of the space activities in the UAE, which goes back to more than three decades, in some cases actually four decades, where the UAE had a number of space activities and alhamdulillah achievements. And starting, you know, let's say with Suraya in the 90s, late 90s, early 2000s, to Yasad, to Iyas, which today became also Merkaz Muhammad bin Rashid in BRC Space Center. So the, let me say the good part that we had successful stories and we had some, say, base of infrastructure, but uh, we couldn't call it a plan. We couldn't call it a national program for space. Uh, you know, they had, they were individual plans, but there wasn't actually a centralized vision. There was no, allow me to say, there wasn't a national vision of what we'd like to achieve in space. What is our priority as a country? What is the rules and responsibility? Therefore, it was a clear uh, message by the UAE in 2014, by the UAE government and leadership, that space sector is going to be another successful story. When I say another one, similar to what we have achieved in energy sector, call it oil and gas, call it the clean energy, call it the uh, renewable energy, or you know uh, other type of energies like solar and other things that we are working on in the UAE. Call it like IC ICT sector you know, achievements or aviation and so on. So space is another part of transportation that we're also trying to you know, foresee here to the UAE to become among the most advanced as well as pioneer countries in that sector. So that commitment was very clear by first establishing the space agency. And the key responsibility here was to fulfill that gap that I, read, that I talked about earlier, to have a national vision, you know, to have a centralized plan. When I say centralized plan, some sort of like a centralized visibility of what's happening in the UAE space sector mm -hmm. and coordinate with all the space, you know, uh, economy stakeholders and start trying to develop together some sort of a uni unified vision and priorities and then look at the possibilities among the different players and how they can take part and play a role and contribute but also benefit from these plans. So that was the key role that the space agency focused on in addition to other things that I'm going to talk about later, like for example building capacities and supporting the R&Ds and things like that. So for us the, we look at the, the, the space policies and regulation as enabler uh, for, for two things. One, sustaining the space sector growth. Mm -hmm. Two, maximizing the benefit of our space activities across the space sector, but also across the whole other sectors and economic sectors in the UAE. So in here, you provide a clear vision, you provide a clear priorities, you also send a message of commitment that you know this is now not just a, a company or a particular organization plan, but this is an actual national plan. There is a commitment in here, and this is something that all stakeholders would like to hear, whether they are mm. uh, existing ones or a new ones who would like to become part of here uh, of the space uh, space sector. You also um, send a message of transparency, you know, through the different you know legal frameworks that you have which provide assurance 
to a private sector and investors as well as entrepreneurs with clear rules of responsibilities, uh, procedures, conditions, and things like that. So all of this together will help us achieving what I mentioned earlier, maximizing the benefit of space, you know, whether it's a space technology or a space science or a space education or a space application, how can I maximize the benefits, you know, uh, by engaging all the different stakeholders and sustain the growth of our uh, space economy. Thank you, Nasser, for providing such a great overview. Um, I'd like to ask Dr. Sharji, what makes UAE space unique? And uh, tell us your views on that, please. So before we adopted our space now, uh, we really did a benchmark and we looked um, for around 20 international regions related to space. And we also looked, um, uh, looked at um, around 18 uh, national space laws from the world. And we also looked at internationally, what are the most important subjects that are now in the space sector um, and very important. And then we tried to capture that on our space laws. So comparing to other uh, states laws, you will not see the subject that we covered. And internationally, are they are still um, discussing such issues. And uh, these uh, subjects, uh, we have several subjects such as the space to be mitigation, utilization of the space uh, resources, uh, space support activities and high altitude activities, uh, human space flights, risk and crisis management, materials zone, launch from space, nuclear power data, uh, space data, uh, operation uh, of the re-entry and space tourism. So I think this is what makes us unique, that we're ahead uh, of uh, lots of candidates. Yeah. Actually, Fatima, I understand that you work in uh, space policies as well. So what is your view of the National Space Strategy 2030? And uh, how is that advancing the UAE space law? And how would you ensure an effective governance model in implementing this? Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Um, in regard to the National Space Strategy, it came actually after the uh, development of the National Space Policy in 2016. So the National Space Policy gave us um, the um, aspirations or the aims and the goals that the UAE would like to achieve in the space field. However, it did not give us the house. And uh, this uh, uh, was the reason why we worked on developing the National Space Strategy. It, uh, it's a sectorial uh, strategy which uh, includes 71 initiatives. Mm -hmm. Those 71 initiatives will be implemented within the next 10 years. So um, having a, a clear vision on what the UAE will be uh, focusing on within uh, the next decade give us, um, let me say, a clear vision of uh, uh, not just for us as a space agency, but also for all of the entities that are working in the space economy. Um, including the operators, the academic institutes, the uh, organizations working in the private sector. Uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, it tells you uh, what are the main objectives of, uh, also that we are trying to achieve. Uh, so the UAE will actually be focusing on uh, six uh, uh, domains, uh, or let me say six strategic objectives, uh, one being uh, having an effective uh, or or increasing the effectiveness on offering uh, space services, mm -hmm. uh, space manufacturing and R&D. Um, um, third is the uh, uh, exploration uh, missions. Uh, fourth would be the um, uh, building of space expertise in the space domain. Mm -hmm. So we would like to see uh, qualified UAE nationals working in the space domain. Of course, uh, now with the establishment of the uh, agency and of course having uh, uh, space related missions such as the whole probe uh, uh, we are sure that we have uh, solid uh, uh, let me say expertise in the field and we want to tap uh, more on that uh, the fifth would be uh, that the UAE will be focusing on uh, having effective uh, uh, relations locally and internationally and last but not least is the uh, legislative framework which is the national space policy, the national space strategy, uh, the law, 
uh, the regulations, they will all uh, come into effect in supporting and uh, um, enhancing the performance of the space sector. And of course, when it comes to the uh, governance um, of the um, strategy, uh, I would say that, of course, 71 ish initiatives within 10 years, it's not, a, um, it's, it's not uh, easy, but uh, we worked internally on developing or, or identifying effective tools um, the tools, of course, one is on us as a space agency to reach out to all of the organizations that are working in the space sector, having effective communication with them, um, uh, uh, establishing the National Supervision Committee, which also uh, works as a think tank for us. We would present to them um, the, uh, uh, let me say, what is the implementation uh, in terms of the uh, initiatives of the strategy at the current state, and we would like to hear from them, from their own experience, uh, what are the opportunities that they are seeing, uh, in case there are any gaps, how can we mitigate them? Mm. Uh, and of course, including other uh, tools that we, uh, uh, we are keeping in place to ensure that uh, we have an effective implementation within the specified timeline. Wow, that is a lot in uh, the time scale that you were also mentioning. So now mm -hmm. I'd like to uh, speak to Ham, um, you are working in space activities licensing and uh, that for me is a very interesting topic uh, because as we all know there are limited you know bandwidths as it were and countries and now the private sector are also interested so Hamda I want to just get your view on this um, maybe tell us a bit more of what you do and how do you see increased space activities work in terms of um, your role and uh, the space agency thank you uh, thank you, Helen. So, as you are aware, since the issuing the national space law and having the entire regulatory framework for the space law and the space sector, um, the number of space uh, companies or startups and activity has been increasing. Therefore, there was a need to have a certain regulatory framework yes. to regulate these activities. Mm -hmm. So, as the UAE Space Agency, we are trying, we were aiming to regulate the space activities and to establish a comprehensive legal framework to regulate the space sector on a well advised legal basis, um, which uh, mainly is uh, flexible, transparent, and protecting the UAE interests through, uh, through balancing between the economic and commercial requirements, in addition to uh, ensuring the requirements of safety and security and environmental protection, as well as to drive investment and to promote participation of the private sector in the space industry. And uh, the reason that we are having a full framework, a regulatory framework, is providing some sort of safety and assurance for the investor, foreign investor and local investors to start out space, uh, space activity. And we have been receiving actually a good number of the applications in this year. Mm -hmm. And we are currently processing their uh, applications in order to be uh, authorized by the agency in order to perform their activities. Um, and in terms of um, the assessment and, and analysis of the, each application, uh, we actually, uh, each, each um, application is custom, customized based on a number of factors. Include, and uh, uh, authorization is obtained based on a number of factors, including the nature of the entity, the uh, extent of its maturity, the nature of the activity to be authorized, and taken into account the probability and the impact and the risk related to this activity, in which each case or each um, application is uh, um, evaluated separately. Yeah, thank you for that. So now I'll turn to Talao as the advisor of strategic projects. Um, I know you're very engaged with startups and I'm particularly um, interested to hear your views on the recent activities, let's say, with other startups or accelerators like Hub 71 and how you envisage in the UAE space agency, the private sector working more closely, you know, in terms of partnerships, collaborations and, you know, uh, opportunities to work together. If you could share some insights, that'd be great. Sure. Absolutely, sure. Thanks, Helen. Um, so, yeah, maybe I'll start with the second question first. I think uh, it's important to note that, um, you know, we're living in a very interesting time where the dynamics uh, of doing business in the space sector are shifting because of certain innovations that have been induced by the private sector. So, 
if you look at on a, a global level um, what's happening in the space environment uh, when it comes to commercialization you're finding several different um, uh, dif different types of platforms that are enabling uh, more access to space so if you think of it as the reusability push with companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic, where you're actually having uh, a platform that's um, able to take things up into space and reuse that same platform rather than throw it away every time you're done. So that's really bringing down the cost of access to space and obviously increasing the access and uh, creating the opportunity for more people and more industries and more uh, initiatives to be involved in space. And that's one interesting dynamic that I think many companies can now uh, look at in terms of how space can then enhance their uh, respective businesses. Uh, the other aspect that I think is also um, quite revolutionary is the advent of uh, a new a new small satellite um, architecture, so CubeSats, nanosatellites, and the miniaturization basically of the sensor payloads and technologies that are now allowing for um, um, you know, a similar type of uh, yielded outcome to what we used to traditionally pay uh, a lot more money for and have in much higher orbits. So, mm -hmm. not only is the orbit going down, but the well, payloads are uh, much more cost effective and allowing for a lot new more entrance into the space domain to try to take advantage of space based um, uh, data and uh, 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 applications. So if you, if you think of those two dynamics and how they're uh, helping a lot more companies get involved, um, we in the UAE Space Agency are quite bullish about having an, an organic entrepreneurial space sector develop and an ecosystem develop around that. So in order to do that and to try to help companies that have things in the conceptual phase and bring them to uh, um, uh, where they can try to large scale commercialize them, we need to be that conduit. So I think the most important part of what we do is to try to become a conduit to help small companies with interesting ideas about how to monetize those newly uh, enabled uh, applications from space uh, and connect them with potential end users, be it the municipalities or um, you know the uh, energy or environmental agencies and, and otherwise, just to help them help become a bridge between uh, the solution provider and the end user. Yeah. And uh, so that's something that I'm extremely excited about. I think initiatives like Hub 71 or Crypto Labs and our global space industrial accelerator within are, are all contributing to that uh, dynamic and helping us lean on and leverage what's in existence out there in the ecosystem rather than have to try to recreate yeah. it from scratch and provide that incentive and enabling uh, factor to um, uh, young entrepreneurs and companies uh, not just from the UAE, but in the in case of the yes. GSIA, really from all over the place. Yes. Yeah. Um, so that's something that's extremely exciting yeah. to us at the, uh, at the agency. Yeah. I mean, from, from a, a lawyer coming to the UAE and actually working with startups. And it's exciting yes. to actually see from the outside in how much you've all achieved in your own respects. Um, about a year or so ago, you know, I was in touch with NASA, with Dr. Shaji in relation to, you know, policies, reinsurance, space orbits and all that, um, space debris. And, you know, to see what's happening in terms of startups is very exciting. So one of the hot topics, I guess, is uh, in terms of funding. Um, from, from my experience here in the UAE, it seems that a lot of investors are more interested in sort of secondary market or more established startups, where, as we all know, in space, it's very much thinking outside of the box. It's pioneering. So I wanted to hear your thoughts on two things. Um, one of them, and this could be also uh, directed to NASA as well, is, um, as we know, the trillion dollar business is not up in space. It's actually space applications. So which areas, if I was a startup or uh, someone interested in venturing in space, should I go into? What's your advice? Sure. Uh, I think it's a, you know, the, so the, the total space economy as estimated by uh, entities like Vice and others are uh, somewhere in the realm of $360 billion. And uh, what's important to note about that number is you really break it down. Uh, it's probably around 20 or 25 percent government spending and then the rest is uh, commercial in terms of broadcasting and satellite telecommunications and things of that nature which are pure commercial um, and i think that's starting to shift and what's important about that is you know um, if you if you face um, 
your projections on historic growth of like 7% per year, which has been the case since 2007 and 2015, then that trillion dollar economy that you mentioned uh, becomes quite um, achievable by the 2030s. But if you park that all uh, on the side and you start thinking about how do you en enable and, and um, uh, get more investment and funding into the space uh, domain, I think the biggest inhibiting factor is that you know space um, projects in general are, are very uh, long-term type horizon investments. And uh, so the traditional venture type uh, investing mechanism and time horizons, which are five to seven years, are not as conducive uh, in the space industry as they are in tech plays or high, you know, with, um, uh, let's say, um, real estate and fixed income or private equity. It's completely different because of that time sensitivity to IRI. And so what we try to do in the space agency is help, number one, help um, institutional investors as well as individual investors that are interested in uh, expanding their portfolios, understand the space thesis a little bit, that there is a much, there's the same type of value creation, but it's like back-end loaded probably around the, the year seven to 10, uh, because of how cap capital intensive it is, mm. but also find ways to monetize that early stage with terrestrial applications. Uh, uh, for them to, to consider as well. So that's kind of what we try to do in, in building awareness and educating the institutional investors and showing them the distinctions between uh, traditional um, uh, tech VC type play versus yes. a space uh, investment yeah. uh, opportunity. Yeah. Thank you. So I'll ask Nasser what um, areas uh, that you I think, think will be hot topic. Well, crafted it very well. Yeah. And uh, if I may add, can I pause you guys one second? You've got about 30 minutes in total left. To okay, the the all right, thank you. Yeah. It's very important uh, today, whenever we're talking to entrepreneurs, uh, Talal and myself and you know the team here, we have, you know, we have a program called GSIA, Global Space Industry Accelerator, which has you know, a number of things related, for example, to new space and other activities. Mm -hmm. There is a simple advice that we always talk to the people. The, especially the startups and entrepreneurs, mm. you have to think of space uh, not in traditional way. You have to think about first of all mm. from uh, a space economy perspective, which is a definition that OECD use, and we use it also for measuring Fatma and myself. We use and also measuring our you know health of the sector. The space economy involves everything that relates to space. I mean, it could come from a consultancy perspective, it could come from a legal perspective, it could come from insurance perspective, it could come from training and education. So we want to think about space not just as rockets and small satellites and antennas. We need to think about it broadly. Mm. It, you can come from any background and become part of the space economy. If you are given education, mm. look at opportunities about being a very good company in space training and education. If you're good and low, like you, Helen, and al a legal consultancy, you might want to add space as one of your areas of focus, and so on. It could come from consultancy, it can come from various backgrounds, mm -hmm. including, of course, the traditional space that we know with it, for example, technical engineering and so on. Mm -hmm. We had uh, recently, uh, Talal and Hamza, myself and Mr. Fahed al we were organizing a selection of four startups for mm -hmm. uh, the, the cohorts of 2020. Mm -hmm. And uh, believe me, uh, only I think one of them came from space. The other three, you know, we did a filtration of 151 application and we ended up selecting four. Uh, as far as I remember, one of them only came from space, which was an actually satellite. But the other three came from other dimension. One came from solar panels. Yeah. Another one came from training and, you know, education. A third one came from, you know, and, you know, for example, fixing, you know, uh, telecom antennas and things like that. But they were able to, be, to add that or basically spin this in to space. Mm -hmm. And later on, potentially, we ask them even to think about spin off mm -hmm. from space. Mm -hmm. So my point I'm trying to say is that uh, you can approach space from any direction. I think yes. the key thing in here that you need to think about is what are you good at? What is the niche in the market? Mm -hmm. Second, think about a spin off from day one, because as mentioned by Talal, it's a long term journey. So you want to do things related to space. And a good example of that, as uh, Talal and many of the people in space always mentioned, is Elon Musk, where he was, he has a very long vision when it comes to, you know, having a human settlement in Mars. But in the meantime, there are test labs, 
same as some of the other things that are coming as a spin-off, improving his, uh, his, uh, his business. Last but not least, uh, you cannot have, you cannot ask the, like, do a business for the UAE in space. Mm. You have to think global from day one, mm. which yeah. means that you cannot say, okay, I'm just going to open a space business only for the UAE, because whether we like it or not, no, uh, it's very rare to find a country in the world that is, there is enough business for space within one country. Yes. I mean, space is meant to be not even global, it's meant to be universal. Mm. So from day one, the minimum you should yes. think is regional or global from day one. Yeah. So how can I serve a number of countries' needs? So this is the, the thing that we always try to say, search in our market, we can, we can help you with our market here in the UAE, asking the different stakeholders who could yeah. be benefiting or potential clients, but you need to do your job also with others, mm. you know, other countries and other potential, you know, uh, region to to see also their needs because yeah. you want to sustain that, you know, uh, later on. Yeah. So these are just kind of like principles. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think that the specific areas Talat has highlighted in this video. So I think this is a great overview. I think what would be of interest to our audience as well, particularly the young people. Like yeah particularly of interest to young people, is your journey. Can you hear, Can you hear now? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Sorry. No. So, <laughs> so I think what would be of interest to our audience is your journey. So maybe if we can go one by one, what inspired you to join, say, the space sector and specifically the UAE Space Agency? Can I start with uh, Dr. Sharji? <laughs> Actually, when I came, when I graduated from UAE, from uh, George Washington University and came back home, I really didn't know much about space, but when I was turning a TV or going anywhere, space was the, the most important subject. So from there, um, my passion about space began, and then I uh, applied, and I was really fortunate to be uh, part of this team. Uh, Dr. Sharjee, I just want to finish off on that on that point. So you came back, you weren't sure what you're going to do, but you you went you know head first in terms of applying for the space agency. So so what tips or what uh, traits would you say um, it's worthy to have when going into like the space sector? Sorry, can you repeat the question? Yes. So like what uh, what traits? Would you think for someone like uh, like you um, would uh, would have uh, been good to have when applying for, say, the space agency or in the space sector? I think first uh, two things: um, the Arabic language and the English okay. language. <laughs> so main two things. Number two, of course, knowledge. Even if you don't have all that uh, very, like if you are not very experienced, but at least you have the basic knowledge that will encourage, you can encourage yourself and really uh, dug in in the field and just improve uh, your knowledge about the space and space sector. Mm -hmm. I think um, that's uh, good enough to, to uh, be part of the uh, space agency. Uh, how about you, uh, Fatima? Um, could you tell us a bit how you got into the space sector? I can't hear you. Hello, Helen. Um, so, um, I graduated from Khalifa University with Masters in Computing and Information Science. So, I have a, a, a technology uh, background. And then I got the opportunity to work in Abu Dhabi Digital Government, specifically on developing strategies and policies. And this gave me the opportunity to move to the space sector um, uh, to focus on uh, space policies. And uh, let me tell you, I'm extremely, extremely lucky to have had the opportunity uh, to join the agency, um, especially that uh, I am now working with NASA on rolling out the national space strategy. It's very interesting to see the development of the space sector, especially that you have this holistic overview um, uh, this, I would say, is, uh, um, I'm not sure if يعني, I have the good uh, expression, uh, but I would say it's the best thing that uh, um, I, I, I got to, uh, to work on, especially on uh, uh, the rolling out of the National Space Strategy. It's really, really interesting. You see the involvement of the space sector. Yeah, yeah. thank you. 
Hamda? How about you, Hamda? Thank you. Um, so this story started like very early because since I was young, I was interested in space and the space sector. And in 2014, when the agency was established, um, I believe they had a social media and they started posting in social media and I've been following them since then. So one day they have posted that they had a collaboration or MOU with the higher college of technology, which I'm a student at, at, this, at that point. And they are currently offering scholarships for students. So I've been doing my research, I've, look, I've looked for emails and tried to apply for this scholarship. And I got it, alhamdulillah, at, I believe in 2017, I got the scholarship from the Iranian Space Agency. And since then, this scholarship opened the door for me, as I've been able to um, join the Space Generation Congress in 2018, I believe, or 19. And I went to the IAC, International Astronomical Congress as well, in Bremen, which uh, uh, there I met a number of space leaders and space influencers, and I was astonished in their views, and I, under I understood the space sector very, very well. Because, you know, from a young age, I used to think about the space sector as it's only about launching rockets and telecommunication, but I didn't thought about the actual applications of it and, and how it was ut utilized on Earth. And from that perspective, although my background is mechanical engineering, but I was more interested into the policy aspect, into the regulatory aspect on how things, the background of the uh, actual application and how can we regulate uh, this, um, this um, aspect. And after, uh, during my studies, I had the uh, chance or the opportunity to be part of, uh, to get my internship here at the Ray Space Agency, where on experience on the uh, um, policy and the regulatory aspect, which I was very, very interested in. And after graduating, I had the chance to join the International Space University and uh, uh, specifically the Southern Hemisphere Space Study Program in 2019, which was an inter intercultural and over it gave me an overall view of the space sector. Um, in different groups, such as the business, investment, technical, legal, and uh, like a problem said, a holistic view of the space sector, which gave me the needed baseline or the needed background to be ready to work at the space sector. And um, met last year, I believe in July or in August, I finally joined the UAE Space Agency. And like, yeah, I achieved my dream and I will continue doing that and developing the national space sector. Oh, thank you. I think for a number of us, we're also alumni of ISU, which is great. So how about you, Talal, your journey? Yeah, well, thank you. Uh, so for me, it's a little bit different as well. I think uh, I was, you know, uh, stationed at the UAE Embassy in Washington, D.C. for nine years. And I think around my fifth year was when uh, uh, Dr. Mohamed Lahbabi, our Director General, was on one of his uh, frequent trips to the U.S. And uh, I used to deal with him because he was a board member at Piasat and um, uh, in his military capacity as well. And, you know, I was very focused as, a, you know, as part of the commercial attaché on many different sectors at the time. Uh, defense being one that I took uh, very seriously because I really enjoyed the technologies behind the defense sector and some of the things that we were trying to procure. So there was like a big ITAR export control legal component there, and there was no expertise within that domain. And mind you, I have no expertise technically in general. I, I was more an international uh, business academic background. Uh, but I had to self-learn how to deal with ITAR because nobody else was going to do it in the U.S. Uh, at, the, at the embassy, I mean. And, um, and uh, through that, learned a lot about the technologies that were involved. And um, when Dr. Fabi came to me that year in particular, he asked, uh, he, he said that we are starting a space agency soon and I'm going to probably need your help with similar ITAR type uh, aspects. I'm like, okay, just another sector. And at that point, I kid you not, I had zero clue about anything to do with space. I knew that there was a moon and that I thought <laughs> two people had only been to the moon, Neil and Buzz, because that's what we kept hearing. And uh, I knew there was something floating around uh, Earth called the International Space Station. I had no idea what it does, where it was, why it was. Uh, that was the extent of my knowledge when it came to space. I knew there was a planet called Mars. I had no idea how many planets there were. So I was completely naive when it came to the space uh, sector and uh, uninterested. But when he said, 
uh, I'm going to need you to go to JPL uh, in Pasadena and talk about DSN. That's what I'm like, what, what is, okay, what is JPL, what is DSN? I know what Pasadena is because I studied down the street from there. But those two other acronyms, no clue. Uh, except for JPL that I knew that I had a genius friend in college that worked there. So I'm like, why are you sending me to this place with geniuses and what is DSN? He's like, all right, you've got some work to do. And that night, like anyone else who wants to learn anything, I went on YouTube and started digging down this rabbit hole, finding, figuring out Deep Space Network, why is it needed? Why do we have this Mars mission? How do you communicate with spacecraft and navigate it? And I'm still, I'm still digging to this day. So that's kind of how I got involved. I, I built a passion for it. I love the technology aspect behind it, uh, just as much as I like the uh, defense sector, and uh, even more so when the end use of space exploration is a lot more pleasant than the defense sector is. Uh, and um, joined the space agency about two years ago from the uh, UAE Embassy and haven't looked back. Okay, great. And Nasu, your story? Nasir, your story, your turn. Sorry, so uh, I think uh, I'll join the, the club in here. Uh, I think uh, at least three of us, I remember Talal, uh, Hamza, and myself, we worked for the space agency before joining the space agency. <laughs> okay. So, uh, <laughs> and we didn't know that uh, whether this is going to be our uh, destination or not. And I'm sure that uh, several people, uh, you know, who worked in space, industry originally they didn't plan it that way and this is proving the point that we had earlier not just to join in as an employee but even to start your business in space you can approach it regardless where you're coming from you can see an example of diplomacy with Talal approaching space and today he is a strategic advisor a senior strategic advisor to our director general on space you can see Hamda today who approached it from different perspectives but today she's the one handling the licensing regime here um, now, for me, what attracts me to space, uh, to be honest, is that uh, I like startups. I like startups. I like, uh, the reason is, uh, I like startups is, and this is, by the way, and before the space agency, I was in the uh, NISA, the National Electronic Security Authority, and again, there it was a startup at that point. And then before that was also the, the, the TRA, the Telecommunication Industry Authority, and when I joined it again, I was, it was in the startup phase. And what I love about it is that I love pioneering, you know, and this is strong. I mean, in space, we call pioneering an astronaut, right? So you like to do something or go somewhere that, you know, no one been there before. And definitely space is one of those areas that, especially in the UAE and number of countries around the world, that was very new. And that was, for me, is something that is, um, you take that risk, you get the feeling of a startup, which means pioneering, trying to do something, uh, that is in a green field the, and, and the other thing is that you know that term that we always hear sky is the limit when it just turns to become the start rather than the limit yes um i like also the discovery aspect of space and every day whether you are talking to Batman about how we are rolling out our national strategy or i'm talking to Dr. Fathia about the law and the new issues in the law or i'm talking to Hamda about the licensing and so on, or I'm talking to my team in the education about how we're approaching it, Falah and myself when it comes to entrepreneurship, every day we are discovering something in space. And the sector itself is discovering something. And I love this dynamics. Yes. And you know, it's just endless. Yes. You know, every day we learn that we're just using smaller and smaller yes. fraction of space, not yes. bigger and bigger. Yes. It's just so huge. Yes. And this is for me was, that's it. Yes. This is my station. Um, I don't know what's next, but honestly, it's very difficult to go into space and come out of something else. <laughs> That's great. It's so big, you can't go smaller. So what would be nice is maybe if we go around and each one of you just leave one thought or two for a young entrepreneur to inspire them to enter into the space sector. So let's start with Nazar. What's your final words? Um, fi final words, okay. I just want to say something, uh, since we are in the uh, hot thing, yes. um, I want to say that the UAE was famous for energy mm. and is continuing to be famous for energy. However, the energy for 2071 is no more the oil, but as highlighted by our leadership, mm. it's the youth. This is the energy that we are bidding on. Mm. And space, the beauty is that we're not enabling 
uh, youth to be part of space. Mm. But a good example, just in my team, we are enabling space by youth. Mm. Uh, we are enabling space by women. Mm. And I think um, space has proven that through our missions, successful missions, whether it's our astronaut program, whether it's our uh, establishment of the space agency and its program, whether it's the Mars mission, has proven totally how the energy of the UAE 2071 is going to be its youth, as well as how it's been enabled by our professional women. Thank you. How about you, Dr. Shaji? Since we we're here for the youth and the startup, I'll just tell them, follow your dreams and ne like, never give up and everything is possible. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Fatima? You can't hear me no. I think it's just some delays. Fatima? Fatima. Would you like to say a few words? Yes. Um, so there's something that I would say is that uh, everyone should follow their dreams and their passion. And uh, if they have passion for space, it doesn't mean that they don't join the space agency. They cannot contribute to the space sector. Where, wherever they have an opportunity in any entity, they can uh, have an impact on our space sector. So uh, just have this passion, keep hold of it, and uh, go forward. So. Okay. Hamda? Would you like to say a few words? Um, I would say um, believe in yourself, believe in your abilities, and believe in your own potentials. And as uh, my colleagues Fatima and Dr. Fakhri said, follow your dreams and follow your goals. And Talal, you have the final words. <laughs> your mic. Hello. Your, your mic. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So I, I would say uh, to the youth, it's, it's not rocket science. Although it is, it's not. And sometimes they used to say it's not rocket science when they're referring to something not being so hard. Well, the space sector and being a part of the space sector is not rocket science. And I'm living proof that you don't have to be a super smart genius with a technical background to be part of the space sector and contribute, just like Fatma said. Um, all, all you have to do is have a passion for it uh, and contribute in, in, in a way that, um, uh, that you can, whether it's in a different discipline, um, with law, policy, business development, marketing. It's a whole industry that's going to need so many. It's so multidisciplinary. It's going to need someone um, from every walk of life to be contributing to uh, the development and uh, building out the ecosystem. Uh, and the one thing I would say to entrepreneurs that are in the youth hub in particular, uh, even if your product or service is not directly linked with space, you can find a way that you can have it maybe potentially be optimized by space. And uh, we at the Space Agency have an open door policy to be able to uh, support you in trying to formulate what that application might be um, to, to support and enhance your business uh, through space. Yeah, that is an amazing summary of inspirational thoughts. And I just want to mention that this year the IAC was postponed to next year, so I hope everyone can join. And obviously there will be an innovation zone for all the startups, so we look forward to seeing you all there. I will now pass on to uh, Jessica to wrap up. That was so, that was so interesting, everybody. Thank Absolutely you so much, amazing. So much thank you so much for, us. for everybody you. from the UAE National Space Agency for joining us today. I think all of your words have been absolutely inspiring and also you've also entertained us as well. So I think the youth and all the audience are going to really enjoy the presentations that you guys have provided for us today. So thank you so much. A big round of applause to you guys. So I'll just wrap that up today. That's the end of our workout session. Um, this has been supported to you by Hamdan al Shamsi Lawyers and Legal Consultants. And we've also had the most amazing guest speakers today. So everybody's information will be portrayed at the end of this presentation. And thank you so much again for everybody for joining us. Thank you.